What's better than courtside seats? Free sports on Pluto TV. Hey, sports fans, get all your sports free on Pluto TV. Pluto TV is your home for sports. Watch 24-7 channels of MLB, MLS, MMA, sports news and analysis, plus documentaries, TV shows, and movies, all for free. No signups, no fees, no contracts, ever. Download the free Pluto TV app on any device. The following program is a Podcast One.com production. From Hollywood, California, to the Broken Skull Ranch in Texas. This is a damn good outlet for me to spew the bullshit off my brain. This is the Steve Austin Show. All right, everybody, this is Steve Austin. Welcome to the Steve Austin Show. I'm very lucky today, very honored to be joined by Shawn Michaels. If you don't know who Shawn Michaels is, he's quite simply one of the absolute greatest professional wrestlers to ever step foot in a ring. He's a three-time WWF champion, a one-time world heavyweight champion, a one-time WWF European champion, three-time intercontinental champion, five-time WWF E-champion, tag champion, one-time WWE tag team champion, two-time Royal Rumble winner, WWE Hall of Fame inductee in 2011, Sean now hosts Sean Michaels' McMillan River Adventures, which has aired for two seasons, and season three starts on July 2nd on the Outdoor Channel. The show has been nominated for multiple awards, including Best Show. He has won a Golden Moose Award for the Best Conservation Show for the Controversial Wolf Episode. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to uh, announce Sean Michaels. Sean, welcome to the show. Steve, I, I appreciate you having me, uh, although I have to tell you, after conferring with counsel, um, they have informed me that I should probably plead the fifth on everything, so, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know that I, I don't know that I can, I don't know that I can tell you much, especially after that intro, man, I mean, that, that covers all the good stuff, everything else goes downhill pretty drastically after that. It all goes downhill from here, and uh, I appreciate you bearing with me. You know, when we uh, just started this show, I knew that uh, part of the program was going to be to have people on such as yourself, and I tell you what, I had to brainstorm idea. I said, you know what, shit, I might as well just have Shawn Michaels on episode two and go from there and uh, jump right in, feet first, and here we are talking. So bear with me as I hack through this thing, and you and I have known each other for a long time, and to go back and give a little bit of history on you and me, I remember back in the day when they brought me into the WWF, they brought me in as a ringmaster, and you know they just brought me in as a mechanic and just a guy that could have matches with anybody on the card. And if you'll remember, you were on top back then, and you and me worked a lot back then, and just because you needed an opponent to beat who could give you a good match, and I was that guy. So to the listening audience out there, I cannot tell you how many times Shawn Michaels has kicked me in the mouth, and I was looking up at the lights laying there on the mat. I looked up at the lights so many times, I think I need my retina and my corneas replaced. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> well, you know, and that's one of the things, you know, it's funny, that, you know, uh, we, uh, I don't think there's ever been a time we've really got to talk about that. I mean, it was, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, and, you know, how do you not? I mean, obviously, you, you know, the Stone Cold was, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, was huge, and it's hard not to focus on that, but... Uh, you know, yeah, one of the things a lot of people don't know is that, uh, yeah, I mean, when you first came in, I mean, you and I were main event in a lot of, a lot of, you know, they, they wouldn't put us in any of the major towns because we, right. we hadn't done anything on TV, but, uh, in every other place. And I'll tell you, one of the things you did for me, and this isn't blowing smoke, and you remember me commenting on it the first time you said it, which was, you know, we got together and you said, hey, man, could I just sort of just, you know, you know, you call it out there and just sort of do whatever. And if you remember, I was like, dude, yes. I mean, anything, you know, I mean, I had, at that time, I was, you know, probably uh, wearing more hats than I should have at that time, trying to be a, a, a good guy and the champion and, and all that stuff and, and having to general a lot of my own stuff at that time. And to be able to go out there and uh, just not do anything except depend on the guy, uh, you know, get the old way. I guess you know what I mean. I don't, you know, and I don't know. I, I'm, I'm assuming, Steve, because it's your show. We can be open and honest. We are anything. open and honest. Anything but, flies on this show. Yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, you could just. I mean, it was just. It was uh, for me, especially. You know, at that time, it was. A, it was a huge. Uh, you know, favor to me. You know, to be able to just have a dude out there calling the match, and you know, I was, I was thinking about it today. I mean, you know, they were very. Uh, if you don't mind me saying, they were very 
Flair steamboatish, you know, uh, our matches then. I mean, right. and, uh, again, as much as I would have, you know, liked to have brought that to TV, obviously, we, you know, we, uh, we, we never got that opportunity, but, uh, you know, it was, dude, it was a huge, huge thing for me uh, at that time to just have a guy that I could go out there and completely relax with and, and you know, and, and, and not all that sort of be on my shoulders to, you know, to call and, and to try to get through. Well, it was a lot of fun for me because, you know, coming from a different territory, I'd been watching you for years and knew, you know, obviously who and what you were, one of the best in the world even at that time. So to go out there and uh, get a chance to wrestle with you, and, you know, this was back in the day before I got dropped on my head, and I was a little bit more uh, wrestling-oriented. I kind of had to modify my style after the pile driver, and uh, back then I was a little bit more of a, a scientific wrestler, so there was a lot of wrestling that went into those matches, and uh, we really uh, gelled together, we really flowed together and had great chemistry, and we really didn't know each other too well. Uh, so those matches uh, were very instrumental uh, for me because I remember one time you and I were wrestling at the Houston Summit. It was sold out, and uh, we just went out there and did our things. And then uh, I remember after that match, Brett the Hitman Hart had uh, watched that match, uh, you know, from one of the doors, and he came up to me and he said, "Hey, man, he just uh, I just want you to know that was a hell of a match." He goes, I'll, "I'll be glad to work with you anytime." And that was just based off a match with you, and there I was as a dumbass ringmaster. So it certainly opened a lot of eyeballs and doors for me. So, uh, uh, you know, much appreciative on uh, on my side. But, uh, you know, I want to talk about uh, a little bit of your career and covered in real broad strokes because I'm sure you're kind of in the same boat as I am. You know, a lot of times when people interview me, they ask me the same old shit that they've been asking me for 10 or 15 years. And, man, I'm always happy to talk to people, but sometimes, you know, the same old thing is the same old thing. So I want to step out a little uh, of the box a little bit and just, uh, if you and me were just sitting here shooting the shit and drinking beer or whatever or hunting on, uh, on an MRA adventure or at the Broken Skull Ranch, I just wanted to start off with a couple of questions, take you back to your childhood, uh, work into a little bit of a Russell, WrestleMania 14 specifics, the night I won my first championship from you, and talk about, you know, what you're doing these days with McMillan River Adventures. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, obviously, I guess going, going back to the beginning, uh, military kid, you know, at the beginning, uh, you know, uh, like with all military kids, you're moving around quite a bit, you know, born in Arizona, two months later, off to... Somewhere in England, I don't even remember. Um, first memories from uh, Maryland, Camp Springs, Maryland, uh, at uh, I think four years old. But uh, you know, then then moving to Del Rio, Texas, I think at eight, and then uh, man, how was Del Rio back in the day? What's that? How was Del Rio, Texas back in the day? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it was. You know, I mean, it was. Uh, you know, it was dry. It was hot. It was desert. You know what I mean? I mean but, but you know what? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, to me, it was uh, that was the very beginning of you know of falling in love with the state of Texas. You know what I mean? And and uh, you know, getting dirty, riding you know, riding you know, riding bikes, riding riding dirt bikes, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you know, sort of you know, my my first encounter with the outdoors. Never never went hunting. Way too young. But uh, you know, just. Uh, you know, getting to uh, you know, sort of uh, fall in love with the uh, the Texas lifestyle, but but you know, more than anything, hot, 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 hot. <laughs> you know what Real mean? hot. Yeah. And then, he, he, did you go from Del Rio into San Antonio? Yeah, yeah, we uh, yeah. My father got uh, transferred up to San Antonio. We were three hours up three hours up the road, and uh, well, I've got some know, questions for you there. Uh, going uh, into yeah. the, the the San Antonio location, uh, but when did you first know? In your heart, you wanted to be a professional wrestler. Uh, in in San Antonio, um, it was right before cable was coming out. You know the old cable. How old but were I you? Mean, I I had I was twelve years old. Got to got to you know whatever reason up late on a Saturday. It was back when you know back when they were you know you know wrestling was twelve thirty at night on on Saturday nights and Southwest Championship Wrestling came on and just you know just that montage at the beginning just sort of drew me in. And, uh, you know, at that time it was Wahoo McDaniels and Tully Blanchard. They had, a, you know, it just, they had the big feud going on there. Scott Casey, Black Gordman, uh, Jose Lothario. Um, you know, and then, you know, then Scott Casey had this huge, you know, I mean, this huge thing, uh, 
angle with Eddie Mansfield that ended up in a hair, you know, hair versus hair match. I mean, it was just, uh, but that was, that was all that the funks, you know, the funks coming through. And then as cable came about, you know, almost around the same time, that's when we got TBS and, you know, and, uh, you know, the then WWF out of the Madison Square Garden and, and, and that WOR TV and, and, uh, you know, and so, I mean, it just, it, and it just sort of consumed my life. I mean, it was, you know, I was, obviously, you know, Steve, going up in Texas, football is everything. And, well, that's what you know, I wanted to ask you. You, you know, know, you're taking a shine to this wrestling at about 12 years of age. What kind of kid were you? I, mean, I know you as Shawn Michaels, a heartbreak kid, uh, par excellence in the ring. Were you a total sports guy? Uh, was it football, baseball, track? Well, believe it or not, I mean, one, I was, yeah, I was an incredibly shy kid. <laughs> you know, really? I mean, part of, I mean, believe it or not, they had turned out to be very, very, very obnoxious. But, uh, you know, very shy kid, um, you know, coming from the you know, military background, always being the new kid, just sort of, you know, uh, was shy. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it was basically, it was football, but, you know, yeah, played, played baseball ran, uh, or at, uh, you know, Laughlin when we, when we were in Del Rio. But when I got to Randolph, uh, it was basically, you know, I, I wasn't wasn't big into basketball, so it was football, you know. And then in the off season, they had a lot, a lot of the football players doing track, and you know, I threw the discus, you know, and the shot put. But you know, you know, that wasn't a very premier thing. So basically, it was focused on 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 football year round. And then I was, you know, I was, you know, going after my you know, my wrestling bug, you know, all the other times. I mean, I, you know, me and my buddies were go, constantly going down to the base gym and. And even though, you know, I mean, I, you know, I wasn't, you know, training. I mean, you know, you, you start going over stuff and you start watching it and then you, you know, then you begin to, you know, you know, you're studying a, you know, a little bit and, you know, you start trying to do the stuff you're seeing on TV. And, uh, did you guys you know, have a ring or were you just on a mat? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, my, my I mean, me, me and my buddy, I mean, we were, you know, we were, we were having, you know, full matches and I mean, we did a, you know, we did a match for our, you know, our high school talent show. Um, you know, I mean, we, I mean, and, you know, there were other guys, you know, join us. You know, you finally, you know, you, you, you meet other people that are sort of into it. And, uh, but you if know, you guys are just you, all of a sudden putting these matches together, are you guys already calling high spots before you've done any kind of training? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, so you were well, smart to that where, back I mean, then. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, I think it's, uh, I mean, we were, we were just in there doing it on a, you know, an amateur wrestling mat. You know, what I mean, and, and that thing was open all the time. And we, you know, I mean, you know, we were in there, you know, just bumping each other around, beating the crap out, of, <laughs> beating the crap out of each other. You know, uh, and you know, and doing our best not to, you know, to kill each other. That's why, again, you know, years later, I tell you, man. I mean, you know, Jose, you know, he, he trained me for probably two months, and he said, he goes, you basically know what you're doing. I mean, and not to. You know, no, yeah. at some point during the watching, Steve. I mean, I started watching it, but then, you know, you, you know, you're not consciously studying it, but you are. You know what I mean? It's, you know, you start looking at, okay, I'm sort of getting this, but this is there's there's a way to do this and a way not to do it, and right. and that's something I, you know. By the time I was 15, 16, you know, I really started to focus on and you know doing my better my best to get better seats. You know, get those second row seats or first right. row seats at the Hemisphere Arena, and I'm watching really close what they're doing, you know what I mean, and, and, and doing my best to try to figure it out, and then, and then putting it to use, you know, the, you know, the next week, you know, on one of my buddies at the, at, at the base gym. Oh, you know, and that's great that, uh, you know, you got to uh, absorb the business and had a, an inside understanding of it from a, a very early stage. You know, I remember being in the locker room one time and, you know, stinking the joint out and Dutch Mantell pulling me aside and telling me to watch every single match because that's the only way that I was going to learn this. And I watched and watched and watched, and I watched growing up as a kid. But, you know, I obviously didn't pick it up as, as soon as you did. So, obviously, uh, you know, I would akin that probably to you taking in the, the ring and everything that goes on inside a ring to like a Stevie Ray Vaughan and hand, handing him a guitar. I think it's a very close parallel. Yeah, well, I mean, and I also, you know, again, I mean, I still never, you know, even into my first match at Lake Charles when I when I broke in with, you know, Bill Watts, I still didn't know how it all came together. I mean, Jose was an old timer, and he never completely smartened me up. And basically, in my training, all I did was, you know, hit and do squats. He had me get on the top rope and, and do the backflip, and then I was 
was taking bumps, but I never had a full match, or I didn't know about calling the match. I didn't know how it all came together, and I can remember, you know, going to the ring the first time, wondering, like, you know, how is this going to happen? And all Grizz Smith told me was, you know, you know, he'll beat you with the spin and neck breaker and just, you know, Art's a good kid and just listen to him, you know, and, and, and he'll take care of you. And that's, you know, he never told me he was going to, you know, and so I, 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 really, I didn't know what listen to him really meant, you know what I mean, right. until I locked up with him and it was Art Cruz and he started talking to me and then just, you know, much much like you did, man, you know, you know, you know 15 years later, he started, you know, he started <laughs> well, I finally picked it up. I started doing it and, yeah. you know, and, and thank you know, thank, thankfully enough, I mean, none of it, you know, I, I didn't, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at following directions. So, I mean, that's, uh, you know, uh, you know, it, the first one went well and, you know, I came back and much like you, man, that, that you know, that's what they told me, man. They said, you watch every match and, and I did. But how long did it take? I mean, did you just initially hook up? Uh, Jose Lothario broke you in and trained you, correct? Yes. Now, did you seek him out? How did you guys come across each other? No, well, you know what? I mean, uh, I had, uh, you know, been bothering my dad about wanting to do it. And, of course, breaking in then was, you know, uh, next to impossible. Well, my dad comes home one time. He used to golf, you know, golf a bit. And he and, uh, comes home and he says, I played golf with a guy who said he knows – the promoter for uh, Southwest Championship Wrestling. And, and it had switched over from Joe Blanchard to a guy named Fred Barron, and he said he's uh, he's the used car salesman, assistant manager at North Central Ford. And so we went down there and spoke with him, and him and my dad sort of agree that I need to go to college first so I can have something to fall back on. and. You know, I mean, so I, I go to I go to a, you know two semesters of college, and then I come back and I say I want to you know I go back home and I said let's go I want to go talk to the used car salesman again I want to do this now, <laughs> and uh, my dad calls him and and that's when I meet Jose. But you so went to, you went to college at Southwest Texas State, correct? Yeah. What happened? Now, Did you just uh, yeah, not dig Texas college? State. What's that? Did you just not dig college? What was your major? What was your plan going no, in there? Was it any kind of athletic scholarship? Well, funny, funny thing. I mean, I, I was, I was, you know, first semester I had no idea. Second semester, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna start doing something that might, uh, you know, help me in the wrestling. And so I can't remember the name of it, but it was like creative communications or something like that. It was, you know, stuff where I could start, you know, talking and things like that. You know, learning to cut promos. Um, and 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 the only class that I really did well in, I got an A. And I took it all in with psychology. Mm. <laughs> Strangely <laughs> enough, fancy that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, but uh, I mean, I, I mean, at that you know brief uh, meeting at the uh, at the used car place was where uh, first time I met Jose. And and again, he you know he he, he was you know he told people later on because initially it was just about you know making three grand. I mean, this is back in 1985. We paid you know my dad had to take out a loan and. Uh, you know, he charged you three grand. What's that? He charged you three grand to teach you how to wrestle. Yep. Man, that is a lot of money. Yes, that is a lot and of money. Back then, back then, I mean, it still is now. Yeah. But I mean, it was steep then. And uh, what did your training consist of? How many days a week were you going to train with Jose? I was. Well, I was going five days. I mean, I was. I was oh, going. Awesome. I was going every day. You know. Um, but I mean, it probably. And, and, and you know, and you know. In his defense, I mean, I, I mean, I think it was just a business thing. And then, you know, about two weeks in, he, I mean, obviously he never gave us the money back. But, but yeah. I mean, he, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I think he realized that I, that I might have something. And then it became more than just, you know, uh, having me do a bunch of hinder squats. He was really good to me. But, I mean, I, you know, we, you know, we did not do a ton of technical stuff. I mean, but. What did you learn again, the most I mean, from Jose? Uh, you know, basically, you know, how to take bumps. You know, what I mean, how to take bumps and and the backflip off the top rope. I mean, that was something he, you know, he, he you know, he wanted me to do. Uh, you know, uh, I, you know, I was, I was certainly I, because I could do it. I was, I was, I was a really good diver. I mean, we never had, you know, I just, I was a kid that you know could do darn near anything off the board, the diving board. Never did any anything competitive. I was just a kid that spent all summer in the pools. Um, but uh, so I mean, he had me doing a bunch of, you know. 
flipsy doos and dipsy doodles and you know all that kind of stuff that I used to do at the, uh, the beginning of my career when I when I still had knees. Now, was he teaching and teaching you a, a vast background of chain wrestling, or was that something you guys were doing in the gym before you hooked up with Jose just by watching? No, I mean we we you know we we would do a little of that, but I mean we were doing more of you know the hip tosses, the reverse hip tosses, and you know body slams and stuff like that. I mean, truthfully, I learned. I mean, and, and, and that's what he said. He said, "Look, you just need to get out on the road." I learned right. more. In six months in the in mid south, and, and as you know, Steve, back then, man, you went to different territories. There were guys with different styles everywhere. Yeah, I mean, on the job training. job training. Yeah, I mean, it was just the absolute best way to learn was watching. You know, you had guys that had been been wrestling all over the country and all over the world, coming in different territories. Man, it was. I mean, it was a you know, who's who of, of different wrestling styles. I mean, and that's uh, you know, obviously. Where I, you know, I mean, I learned more than anything, you know, when I was, you know, on the job training. Hey, man, do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. And I bet it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. Uh, as far as your, you know, your, your work in ring has always been, uh, you know, just extremely sharp, extremely crisp. I've always uh, gone on record as saying you're the greatest in ring performer I've ever seen, and you know, from just uh, execution, psychology, night in, night out, telling story, multiple layers, uh, salesmanship, uh, just the the whole thing from top to bottom. Uh, you were one of the best sellers in the history of the business. Where did you pick up your ability to do that? Did, did you draw any of that from Jose? Uh, where did you pick up? The, who who helped well, you sell? Well, I got to say, I mean, the two guys I would probably give a uh, majority of the credit for that would be uh, Ricky Morton and Terry Taylor. I mean, uh, those were, again, um, obviously continued to try to work on it. And, and I tell you what, Marty, Marty was a big part of that when I got to Kansas City. But, um, you know, Ricky Morton and, and Terry Taylor were the two guys that I uh, watched a lot, spent a lot of time with in Mid-South when I very first started. And, and that's where I, you know, really watched and, and, and learned, you know, you know, with you know about how to really draw sympathy, you know, from from the crowd and and to make it believable, especially you know when even at that time it was still you know more the traditional way of wrestling. But even then, you know, it was starting to turn a little bit. They had the big rough, tough baby faces there too, and Doctor Death and Hacksaw Jim Duggan and Jake the Snake. You know, so it was starting to turn into you know you know the more tough guy baby faces, but. You know, guys like Taylor and uh, Ricky Morton could still could uh, still draw that you know that old school yeah, those, in. So I yeah, those, give them a ton of credit. Yeah, those guys were awesome, and especially Ricky Morton being a smaller guy. And, and you know, Rock and Roll Express, one of my favorite tag teams, in my top three of all time. And Ricky Morton was absolutely wonderful. Uh, do you think in today's ball game? Do you think in today's ball game that the art of selling has been somewhat lost? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, listen, I don't know if it's lost. I think that it's done less because, uh, you know, for different reasons. I mean, I just, I mean, I, I think that because guys, it's a faster product, and they're just trying to go, 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 and not get people to yeah, change yeah, the channel. Yeah, I think yeah, maybe learn I mean? something and, to and, that. And, I, and again, I mean, and I don't know how much of it is is, you know, being concerned about you know the the development or lack thereof. Of, of of the character, you know. I mean, a lot of guys, you know. I mean, they worry about, you know, being vulnerable. I mean, I mean, I mean, if you get to pick a part, everybody, you know, Kevin Nash used to always joke with me about like, hey, who doesn't want to be the guy that flies the helicopter, smoking a cigar, you know, with the machine gun in his hand, beating everybody up and getting the chick at the end? Everybody does, you know. But you can't always be that guy, you know. I mean, everybody's sort of got to have a role and. You know, sometimes you got to be the guy that, that that does get beat up, and that's one of the things that, again, even for all my faults in the ego area, which there were plenty of, I was always uh, really comfortable with making you know Shawn Michaels, HPK, whomever you know, whomever you want to call him, uh, pretty well rounded. You know, what I mean that that he was going to go ahead and 
experience every emotion. Didn't matter if it was, you know, funny, sad, laughing, crying, hurt, you know, scared, whatever. Um, you know, it, I mean, you, you run some risks with that, you know what I mean? But, uh, I mean, it was, uh, you know, that was a, you know, a choice I went ahead and made. And so I think, you know, to, you know, the point of your question, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, guys are less, you know, desiring of wanting to play that role. I think more people want to be, you know, dude, you, you know, you, you, you made one of the coolest characters, you know, in history. And it's pretty tough not to want to be that guy. You know what I mean? When you compare Stone Cold to HBK, which one would, would most dudes want to be? Well, you know, you what know I mean? and so, but that know, being said, even, not, even a Stone Cold, I had to learn how to sell in the dose that was proper for Stone Cold. Because, I mean, even a Stone right. Cold, I mean, if, if I didn't have any vulnerability, and if I was just chopping through people and running through them, then, you know, and to a, a, a vast majority of the time, that's what I did. That's what the crowd wanted. But, yeah, even Stone Cold had to be uh, vulnerable. But before, before he, uh, you know, I kind of fast forward into some of your title reigns in the WWF. Uh, I know that you opened up a, a wrestling school there for a period of a couple of years. Um, how was that? Did you enjoy teaching what you had been taught and what you had learned on the road? And why did that all stop? Yeah, I mean, I, I did really enjoy it. I mean, I, 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 I uh, you know, it sort of takes you back to all the, the best parts of the business, you know, all the stuff that you sort of enjoyed before it got tough and it got to be the business, you know what I mean? I mean, so that, from that standpoint, it was real fun and very enjoyable. Um, very much enjoyed it. Um, and the reason I stopped, one, was because, I mean, again, that's when I started, you know, considering coming back. But also, you know, that was still in a, tra you know, I was still, trans you know, in you know, a transition stage between, you know, being the uh, screw-up that I was in the past and, and, uh, trying to, to, to get my life together and get my family life on get together and back on track. And, 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 and I just didn't think I could, uh, you know, do all the, do it all at the same time. And, uh, third, you know, I started doing TV and, uh, and running some shows and that really got tough, you know, uh, right. somewhat financially, but also I can't imagine, you know, I mean, the, you know, and I mean this, you know, uh, you know, respectfully. But I mean, having guys who, you know, haven't really made it in a lot of places, look at you and go, "Hey, dude, you know, I mean, what are you doing with me on TV?" It, it was, it was tough. It was, it was meant to just be a starting ground and a place to get experience, but to have to deal with, you know. Uh, again, I mean, I, and again, it's funny because it happened to me, and I was tough on, you know, I was I was tough on on people. Uh, the irony was, you know, to have somebody who, you know, hadn't been anywhere in the wrestling business yet look at me and go, "Hey, dude, what are you doing with me?" Or I don't want to do this, or I don't want to do that. It just I thought to myself that it's hardly worth it. I'm trying to, you know, it's a little, little too much of a headache, and so that combined with. You know, thinking about coming back and, and you know, focusing on, on getting my life together, I just uh, felt it was better to, you know, to, to give it over to somebody else. Well, you know, and talking from you you and I having this conversation, I'm sure there's been so many times you've been asked, uh, Sean, you know, where should I go to learn how to wrestle? Do you have any recommendations? I, I get asked that all the time. Uh, and obviously your school would have been a premier spot to go. Uh, if you get asked that question today, uh, if there's somebody out there listening that is trying to get into the business of professional wrestling, do you have any recommendations off the top of your head that would, you would consider a good place to learn? Well, I'll be honest. I mean, I, I honestly don't know uh, that many places. And, and, and I say that, I mean, like I know, I know, uh, I want to say Jesse, you know, Jesse Gonzalez. I think it's Jesse Gonzalez. Uh, out in L.A., you know what I mean? But, I, you know, I mean, I sort of point everybody towards the WWE because I honestly don't, I mean, I, I don't know them, I guess, because my, my concern is, you know, even the way I did it, I mean, it's tough because with the insurance and mm -hmm. if you're going to do it right and it's not going to be just beating guys up and trying to make money, right? it's harder to do it that way and a lot of guys don't want to do it that way. And so I'm real, I'm real careful and, you know, about recommending somebody. I just do my best to tell them to really make sure they fully vet whoever it is. You know what I mean, and and 
you know, be real conscious of of uh, giving your money to guys that mostly just want to beat you up and not really, uh, you know, train you well. You know, like that's a, that's a big step, man. And, and you know, so I, you know, I, I honestly don't have enough information to know who's out there and, and who's credible and who isn't. Right. Well, so you started, Jose taught you. You had your first match. You go to to Mid South and Power Pro, correct, and then on to AWA. So you put in your time there. You end up in a WWF. You have all the success you had with uh, Marty as the Rockers, but I want to go right to your first singles championship. Your first IC championship was against British Bulldog Davey Smith, and uh, you winning that belt from him. Uh, what did that mean to you to win your first major belt, and what was the perception of that belt as it relates to the boys on the crew? Well, I mean, I think, uh, you know, one, both the moment that it meant to me and what it meant to the boys and the crew, I think are sort of synonymous. I mean, certainly in my mind, it was the belt that the workhorse had. Exactly. You know, the guy that could, you know, it was at that time, it was more the world championship was more the sort of the commercial guy right. of the company. And the Intercontinental Champion was, a working you know, bastard. for lack of better terms, the real wrestler. Right. Of, you know, and and so um, that's actually the one I can remember thinking. You know, and it was many you know many years ago because I had that perception of it even before I was in the WWF, um, but but still in the business. You know, what I mean, I, I was just a guy that saw the Intercontinental Belt as like you know the belt like a guy like me really wanted. Um, so I mean, it was unbelievably satisfying, of course. Obviously, you know, I mean, and then you want to you know you certainly want to be the guy to uphold sort of that uh you know that reputation even if it's you know you know even if it's one uh that you and you know sort of the guys have have have, uh, have established i mean it, it's it's one that i think people you know you know as well as i do took took pretty seriously and and uh you know again i guess i look back on stuff now steve and i mean i don't know i mean i can remember vince telling me way back when like hey man like you you know the first world championship i'd like you to, to enjoy this and and Yada yada yada. And, Enjoy and, it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I guess that's easier said than done. Continental Championship is probably the last title, you know, that I enjoyed um, until I came back, you know, in 2002. You know, and of course, I made it a point not to hold any titles then. <laughs> right, right. Moving on to the world heavyweight title, you won that title from Brett the Hitman Hart. One of, again, one of the greatest of all time. Uh, what did winning that belt mean to you on a personal level? Well, again, I mean, it, you know, it means, you know, it means a lot of very cool stuff. And again, I mean, again, it's, you know, you want to, yeah, I don't know, I want to like, uh, like tell people like, yeah, I mean, it's obviously it's huge. I mean, it's, it's, you know, the kid in you, all the reasons you want to, you know, be in the business and things of that nature all have come true. And from that standpoint, when you're allowed to have those moments of, of clarity and reality and be, you know, Michael Shaw and Hickenbottom, the kid from Texas, it's, it's you know, it's great joy. Uh, as you know, Steve, you know, you sort of live, you know, a double life a lot of the times while you're doing that job. And, you know, the, the, the Shaw and Michaels, the business dude, the rest of the whatever, I didn't have the ability to enjoy it. You know what I mean? It, it, you know, you're, you're, you're just... Did you stress you know, about so, the responsibility that belt places on you? Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, again, I mean, I don't, you know, uh, I think probably at that time, I, I'm sure I said, you know, I don't care and stuff like that. But, you know, you got to draw. I mean, I don't, I don't, you know, I mean, you, 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 you know, you're looking at the house every night. You, you know, I mean, it's, it, you know, there's, I mean, I can remember... You know, I can't remember one time when Brett had the belt or when Hogan had the belt. I can't remember when I first got to the WWF. Nobody was talking about ratings. You know what I mean? On on uh, from TV. You know, we still had shows. I don't remember ratings being talked about until I think uh, I don't know Monday, the first Monday Night Raw, or maybe somewhere even you know a little bit later than that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And uh, and I'm sure they were talked about. I'm just saying I never. I mean, I never remember hearing about it, and 
you know, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, I knew about the house. You know, I mean, how's the house? How's the house? You know, but yeah, there's just there's just a lot of stuff that comes with it. And again, looking back on it, you know, uh, I do. I, I sometimes I go, yeah, I know it, it's great, but then I have a very realistic, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> response of like, yeah, you know. But I mean, I, I can't I can't say I let myself enjoy it because I was too busy thinking about all the other sort of stuff, garbage, whatever you want to call it, right. pressure. They cut that, you know, they came along with it. Hey, man, do you own or rent your home? Sure you do, and I bet it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. Let's uh let's jump to uh, WrestleMania 14. WrestleMania 14, uh, a pivotal a pivotal time in my career. It was uh, the night in uh, Boston Fleet Center where I was going to win my first World Heavyweight Championship. I was going in to face none other than yourself, the Heartbreak Kid. Uh, we had Mike Tyson in, involved as a special referee. Obviously, you being the uh, heavier footed guy at that time in the business, you knew that Mike Tyson was going to be a part of this. Uh, whole extravaganza probably way before I did, but when Vince is breaking this information down to you about Mike Tyson being involved, what ran through your head? Were you were you down with that? Were you like, hey, that's a great idea, or where were you on the whole Mike Tyson thing? Well, uh, I mean, as best I can recall, I mean, I don't think I knew about it, you know, I mean, I can remember, I think, hearing about it, but, uh, I mean, you, you did the first thing with it. I mean, and I can, I mean... I mean, to be perfectly honest, I can remember, I'm sure, I mean, I can remember being a little jealous of, like, you know, I mean, he's going to, you know, Mike Tyson's going to be here, and I'm in the main event with Steve, and I don't even get to, I don't even get to do anything with him. And so I didn't, I didn't even know, I didn't know we were doing the DX thing or anything like that the first time when you guys went out there and did the confrontation with him where you pushed him and all that with right. Vince. I didn't even know where we were going then, you know what I mean? I mean, uh, so... And I got you know, and as you yeah, as you know, Steve. I mean, some, somebody could have told me then, and it, it's gone now, for all I know. But I mean, uh, but that notwithstanding, I mean, you knew it was going to be big. You knew it was going to help, obviously. You know, the pay per view. Yeah, it was one of the you know, having done a fair amount of those, you know, uh, you know, WrestleManias with you know, quote stars unquote. This one felt like this was going to be one that really worked in our advantage and you're and, you know, and again everybody knew i mean you dad had been a dummy to know that you know didn't know that you, you were coming on hot you know what i mean so it was a it was for me and again just being 100 totally honest it was a you know it's it's one of those things where you're like you know it's it's cool all the stuff that's happening that's big but you're not a part of it and that that was a you know admittedly a tough pill to swallow and obviously not being the Great guy, you know that I am now. <laughs> you know, but I mean, you know, just, I mean was, the guy was, I'm was, talking to was, now was is a lot different than the guy back then. You know, because I remember, man. I mean, tension was high. We we started building that WrestleMania 14 thing, and we brought Tyson in, and everything was going full speed ahead. And I remember the time you, you super kicked me on the on the top of the the ramp there that one time, and you know Triple H was there, and uh, you know I. I we were doing it was a hell of a build up but man it seems there was a little bit of animosity there i mean and you seemingly to me were just in a lot different space then than you are now uh, it seems yeah. you were beat up well and the thing is the animosity was never it was never at you no it was you know never I mean? personal and i it get was, that yeah it was at, it was at the situation it was at Vince. you know the career's over i'm dropping the title i mean we i mean we're about the to frustration be, you know, it was palpable that this is going to be big. You know, I'm going to miss it. I mean, I was there was absolutely nothing good going on with me, and 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 so I was, you know, I was a dick to everybody. <laughs> but th- that being said, uh, but how were you on a physical level as as far as you, on a pain level? I know your back was bothering you uh, at that time. You know, what kind of pain level were you in going into that match through the build? Well, I mean, I you know. Uh, I mean, I, I remember having that one dude. I can't remember his name anymore. Francois. Yeah, there you go. But I mean, he came down to my, you know, my place and was working with me, you know, for I mean, every day before that. I mean, and and you know, it, you know, 
I got to be honest. I mean, I was on, you know, a fair amount of stuff. So, I mean, for me to say what, you know, what I would have been like, uh, you know, completely off it, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't say. I, I, I can't tell you that, you know, going into it, you know, uh, you know the, the whole thing that started it, you know, it was excruciating. I mean, and, and, and you know, you've had, you know, that, that unbelievable pain going down your leg, the leg feeling like, it's dragging, and I guess for me, that was the thing that, you know, cause pain, I guess, you know, pain, I, I don't know, it's one of those, mentally I can always sort of do with pain, mobility, mobility and feeling heavy, always, you know, that more than anything, you know, bothers me, frustrates me, and that's the thing I think that also added to, you know, my frustration and my attitude and everything then, knowing that I could not, it was, you know, the one thing that I had, Steve, always had, even if I was the biggest prick in the world, I could always go out there and just rip it down and tear it up. And I knew that was not going to happen this time. And, and, you know, that, I mean, that more than anything, I think, bothered me and affected my psyche more than anything else. You know what I mean? Does that make any sense? Well, it, it, was, it was interesting because I remember going into that match and I remember coming out of that match and, you know, I won my first championship. But, I mean, gosh, you and me had ripped the, 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 the ring up a uh, hundred times when I first came into the company. And then uh, on, on the grand stage, you know, it just it, it was, wasn't so much. I mean, that's just honestly just between you and me. And as many matches of the year – you have had and that I've seen, uh, you know, it, it was a, uh, could it have been better? It could have been a lot better. But given the situations and everything that was going on, you know, we went out there and we did what we had to do. And uh, so I went to belt that night and uh, you dropped the title to me. Uh, a big deal, a, a big uh, step uh, in my career and something that I'll never forget. After that match, where were you in your head? Was was it a letdown? Was it disappointment? Was was that just part of the business? Was it a weight off your back? Where were you once that three three count happened? You went back to the dressing room and just kind of chilled. Well, I mean, the first thing was, I mean, there there was there was no. It took a long time for me to get to the chill stage. I mean, I was, you know, I mean, one, I mean, and that's you know again. Obviously, you know, now, all these years later, I mean, it's like, it's still like the one question people always ask me, like, hey, if you could change anything. I mean, I'm not big on the whole regret thing, you know, because I don't like to change anything because it might change where I'm at. But it's like if you could have one do-over, you know, that match has always been, you know, one of the things. I don't know if you remember, but I can remember, you know, creatively. I mean, I was always, you know, as were you, good. I mean, you know, we ended up doing basically – what you and Hunter had been doing, you know, right. in house shows. You know, I mean, we didn't even, you know, I mean, just because I wasn't even there mentally, you know, had no drive to come up with something good and creative. You, you know what I mean? I mean, and that's just, I was, you know, so I was never like that. Again, even if I was in the ring with somebody I didn't like, I never, you know, my ring performance was never affected, you know, from that standpoint because, you know, that's one thing. I, it was one, one thing I just... I wouldn't let I wouldn't let suffer. So, you know, that you know the fact that it wasn't you know ripping the house down bothered me. You know the fact that you know the company was moving on. You know that bothered me. I heck, I can remember me. I mean the big you know the biggest my biggest priority that night was nobody putting a shirt on me. I can remember being angry about that. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? I, mean, I was just it wasn't until I got home, I think, and just got away. Uh, from it all, all together, you know, uh, but I think I finally sort of, I think got a little relaxed and I mean, and, and sort of felt like, you know, the weight of the world been lifted off my shoulders. I can remember watching the show the next night, you know, and, and Hunter and, you know, kid coming out and, and, and bringing all that. And, and again, you know, like, you know, and him doing the promo, you know, you dropped the ball and, and all that kind of stuff, and remember, like absolutely none of that, even you know, bothered me in the least bit. I mean, having the ability and the clarity to not be upset with the moving on that happens when you leave. You know what I mean? Right. And that's, I think, the first time you know that I sort of felt like, "Who? Holy cow!" You know, 
uh, you, know, you know what I mean? This ought to bother me more. You know what I mean? If, if a shirt being laid on me, you know, yesterday bothered me so much, how come this doesn't? You know what I mean? Right. And that's, uh, that's what I, what I think sort of the idea of, you know, you know, Steve, the job, as great as it is, it keeps you so busy. And to just, you know, maybe have time to, to get a hobby, to, you know, not go get in the car, to lay around, to do, you know what I mean? To just sort of do whatever it is you want. I think it's the first time I, I probably thought about that since I was 19 years old. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? And yeah. That sort of sunk in and felt like, oh, you know. You know I mean? So, again, I guess that, I mean, to answer your question, <laughs> you know, probably, uh, you know, 24 hours later, it, 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 it took time to, to, to settle in. Gotcha, and I, I want—I wanted to move into uh, down the road, uh, and and again, I'm covering a lot of broad strokes here because you had such a long career, and uh, I'm just not going to ask the same old questions. You know, you you get into the you get inducted into the Hall of Fame. Your speech was the best promo you ever cut. I remember watching that thing, and I was there and and laughing and crying uh, during that speech because you hit such a range of emotions and. Um, I guess, you know, I've never seen you talk like that. So uh, that was a, a very interesting night at the office and, and, and big for you. And so, you know, subsequently you've wrestled since then, but now you are off the road. You are not a professional wrestler anymore. What was getting out of the business like for you? Was it hard? I mean, guys just can't get out of the business anymore. And there used to be the old saying, oh, yeah, you get in the business so you can get out of it. That's bullshit. You get in with it. You get addicted to it. You fall in love with it. It is who and what you are. You're on the road for 45 days. You're dying to get home. You're home for two and a half days. You're bored to death. You're ready to get back out on the road. You know, that that's what the business is. And you just turn. Yeah. The way I always tell people is you turn into a damn zombie. I came. I did. They gave me a schedule. I went out and kicked ass, busted my ass, worked hard. And I loved every second of it. But, man, it's a whirlwind. And, uh, you know, I got out of the business because of my situation, but we're talking about you. So what was getting out of the business like for you, Sean? Well, you know, I mean, it didn't, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I didn't experience the it's hard thing. I mean, I No think, withdrawal? No, no. no I, and, and, again, that's, I mean, and, I, and I guess, you know, everybody always, you know, every time I say that, people go, well, hey, you don't, you know, you don't want to say that yet. You might go back. And it's like, no, no I'm, not, I'm just saying what it was at the time. What it is now, I'm not saying that, you know, I, I, I don't know what the future holds, you know what I mean? But I can tell you, I mean, I can remember after the first match with The Undertaker, um, you know, driving back, you know, from Houston with my wife and saying, you know what, that might have been the one to end it on. And, uh, and, and I told her, I said, I, I, said you know, I don't think you can wrestle a perfect match. I said, but I think that was probably as good as it can get. It was unbelievable. I said, and i got to be honest, I'd, I'd like to, I'd rather end on something like that. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, if you're going to go out, that's the way you got to go out. And i and, and I got to tell you, Steve, I mean, I, you know, uh, you know, you, you get the whole, and I'm not, uh, this is going to sound bad, and I don't mean it that way, but, you know, you hear everybody, oh, my kids in my life, my kids in my world, my family, blah, blah, you know, and I get that. And, and, and I'm not saying it isn't true, but I really, you know, my kids, you know, uh, I dig them a bunch, and you know, uh, I I, I want to be a big part of their life. I don't, you know, I don't want to, you know, if if they screw up their lives somehow, I don't want to be to be because they didn't have a dad, you know, taking enough of a, you know, uh, didn't get enough involvement from their father right. in their life. You know what I mean? I mean, I. I just don't want to screw that up. And as much as I do love, you know, the the wrestling business, I love them a ton more. I mean, and, you know, I mean, I could, you know, I mean, look, I mean, I, you know, it was starting to bother my little girl. You know, the boy, yeah. you know, he was, he was, you know, dealing with it okay. And at, for, with a boy, you feel like you're, you know, you're teaching them toughness and stuff like that by, you know, Tell them, like, hey, what daddy do? We got to work and else. You know, it was really bothering my daughter. You know, I mean, you know, and she was young at the time. And, and I got to be honest, man, it was bothering me. I mean, it was getting hard, you know, for me to leave. And they, they were still, they were working well with me and my schedule and stuff like that. And, and heck, I could even, I mean, I'm sure I could have, you know, I could do it 
something a lot of the guys do, do three, four shots in a year. You know, um, I just was also sort of ready to try something else. I mean, I always tell everybody, it's like, I was full. I mean, and I don't know, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't love the business. I don't know, the way I was supposed to. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. I think I, I think know. it sounds like you're ready to get out, and you had your priorities in line. And, I, you know, I remember I tell people all the time, man, I mean, I was flying so high and running so hard back in the day, you know. I, the, quite honestly, the, I didn't win Father of the Year uh, at all, any year, <laughs> ever. So I uh, love my girls, but I was always on the road. I missed a big part of their life, and, uh, you know, but that is what it is. I mean, and there's millions of people, out, you know, doing the same thing, you know, whether it's a truck driver or whatever you got to do in life to make a living. And uh, ultimately, that's what we were doing. But there, there's a time right. when, it's, when it's time to stop, and I think a time in your head, you know, when when you can accept that. And it sounds like there's a, a time, it was finally at a place in your heart uh, and in your relationship with your family that, that, that you were cool with walking away and having, you know, no regrets and looking forward. Uh, I remember as Paul Orndorff was getting out of the business way back in the day and Paul had a, uh, spinal injury and, uh, one of his arms was atrophied real bad. And he looked at me and he goes, Steve, he goes, don't worry, brother, there, there's life after wrestling. And I said, is there? And he goes, you damn right there is. So there is. And we're going to talk about life after wrestling right now because we're going to go right into you coming out of the ring and uh, turn into the world of hunting. And, uh, man, one day you're riding in a limo going to a WWE event. The next day you're sleeping in a tent on some riverbank. You're the <laughs> co-host of McMillan River Adventures with Keith Mark. I want to give a shout-out to your cameraman extraordinaire, Josh Ishmael. And uh, you've had a very successful hunting show. Uh, when did you start hunting? How did this show come about? Because obviously, uh, when I first met you, I knew you didn't hunt, but it's something you took up later on in life, and j you just seem to absolutely be in love with it now. Yeah, well, I mean, when uh, after you beat me and ruined my life at WrestleMania 14. <laughs> yeah, after being kicked in the chin 600 times. Yeah, that's right. No, but I, uh, you know, I, you know that, that was my first opportunity to go. And, uh, you know, I went out the first time, Steve, and just fell in love with it. You know, I just, I mean, as you know, you know, it's, it's just, it's so opposite of what we do, you know, the peace and the tranquility and just, you know, being out there. And, man, it just mesmerized me. I just, you know, just thought it was the absolute coolest thing in the world. You know, and then you sort of, you know, then you tie that into, you know, okay, now you, you're harvesting this deer and then you're, you know, you know, you're gutting them, you're cleaning them, and then all of a sudden you're, you're processing them, you're putting them, you know, you're putting them out, you're eating them, and all of a sudden it's like this is very, this is all very cool. I'm getting, I mean, this is like here, I've gone, you know, and it was right on the heels of this life, as you mentioned, you know, of limos and this and that and everything. You know, I mean, everybody and their mama, you know, waiting on your hand and foot, and then there was this, uh, you know, the polar opposite of being very self-sufficient, you know, you know, and or maybe in a dirty, grungier way. And I got to tell you, man, that, that all appealed to me. I, and, uh, you know, so I obviously, you know, continued to, to, to do it as, obviously as much as I could. And, and uh, you know, on those, you know, what, after I went back in 2002, you know, you get, you get those, you, know, you get busy, as you know, and you don't always have, a, you know, uh, quite the time to get out that you'd like to. And, you know, you get out, whatever, for three, four days, you know, in the season, and, and so for me, I was just sort of living vicariously through those guys on the Outdoor Channel. And, uh, you know, then, then you start thinking about, geez, you know, I mean, that's, I mean, that's, what kind of awesome job would that be? I mean, wouldn't it be awesome to go from this gig that I loved so much to that? You know, and uh, well, let's, let's talk about going from that gig into this gig, because, you know, in that gig, meaning the the life of the WWE, you're staying in four and five star hotels, being shuttled around in private jets and limousines. All of a sudden you're taking out on the hunting gig and man, you guys are slapping it out anywhere you can uh, in a tent and a sleeping bag and a shithole place for it for you to be. I mean, that's just the way some hunting lodges and some accommodations are, and we love it because it is what it is, and you're in the outdoors. But how is that transition for you? Was it a little bit of a wake-up call? Well, you know, I mean, again, I mean, I, I guess I likened it to the, the, the beginning days. You know, the, right. the, the, the days started at the beginning, and it was the, it was the love of the business. I mean, the money and the limos and the cool hotels – they came along with it, and it was awesome, made it, made it nicer to do, but at the end of the day, it wasn't the real reason I got into it, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I knew that, I mean, man, I can remember getting into the business thinking, like, man, if I could have a 
one bedroom apartment in my own car, that would be awesome. You know what I mean? So, and, and this was the same way. I mean, and that's why I guess I feel like it's it, it's you know it's something that's going to last, and because uh, I'm doing it for all the right reasons, just like uh, you know uh, the wrestling business. And, and you know, I mean, so I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it appealed to me. I mean, there's, I mean, it was, there was, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I sort of like you know the dirty stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, I just don't. That, that's a, you know, that's a part of my life. That I mean, that's truly been there since I was a kid. I mean, that goes back to Del Rio days, man. I like being dirty, and that you know, I mean, and you know, it was actually more of a work actually for me to do the whole, you know, uh, being in my suit and my this and my that and and, and and things of that nature. You know, at my core, I think I'm just a, you know, I am. I'm, I'm I'm a kid that would rather play in the dirt and be outside and and, and things of that nature. Um, that's why, again, I mean, even the even the stuff that doesn't get filmed for the show, and you know, doing a lot of the work on the ranch, I like doing it myself. I mean, I don't want to. That's wanna, that kind of work. It's it's work, but it's fun work. And uh, it, it is exactly. I mean, going and from, that's, because that's the thing. It goes back to you know, same old things, wrestling business. That hey, you know, if you can if you can you know make a decent little living doing something you really enjoy, man, you you never work a day in your life. When you're driving down the road in the wrestling business, your mind's going a million, million miles an hour. If you're sitting behind a wheel and you're, and you're the wheel man or you're riding shotgun, you might be thinking about high spots, transitions, something to put on a T-shirt or the stress of what's going on at the house and you've got no control over it these days. When you're sitting in a deer stand or you're riding your tractor, you're building a fence on your ranch there in Texas. Uh, I know you pulled up stakes from San Antonio and you're living on a ranch now. When you're sitting in a deer stand, it's quiet as hell, and you're enjoying the peace and quiet of the woods, maybe watching some wildlife. What goes through your mind these days? What What do you spend the bulk of your time thinking about now? Uh, you know what? I mean, I, mean I, guess, I guess it depends. I mean, a lot of it is, you know, uh, it's still, and a lot of it's still focusing on my family. You know, what I mean, I mean, my kids are at those ages where they're, you know, they're taking on new endeavors of their own. You know what I mean? Horse lessons, piano lessons. You know, uh, you know, uh, bandolero racing. You know, what I mean? so I think a lot about that. They're, you know, and their little, you know, their little futures and and, and things. That, you know, I mean, I guess I mean not to sound too, uh, I don't know, frilly. Really, Willie, on your show, but I mean, you know, I think a lot about them. I mean, and their, you know, and their futures and and stuff I want to do when it, when you know when we get home. Uh, and you know, I, I spend a lot of time just you know uh, taking it in. You know what I mean? I'm, be, I'm being thankful. You know, there's a time I don't sit out there and go, "Geez, man, Lord, you've been good to me." You know, I mean, you, you know, you've allowed me to, you know, to do these things that I that I really like doing. You know, and and have allowed me to call them jobs. Hey, but uh, I don't think there's anything uh, silly about, you know, caring about the future of your kids, uh, taking care of yourself and, and, and being able to relax a little bit from a lifetime of hard work spent on the road. Uh, you know, when, when I'm sitting in a deer stand, I'm so at peace with myself and everything. And, hey, I still got problems. There's still a bunch of stuff spinning around just like everybody else. But uh, before I wrap this up, just, just as one hunter talking to another, uh, for any of you people that are listening to this, uh, you know, take, take some time. Uh, go get in the woods. Uh, check out the outdoor scene. Uh, my wife is a vegetarian. She's not going to kill anything, but she likes to sit in a deer stand and video deer. So uh, if you can get outside, enjoy nature, and, uh, you know, be responsible about uh, your gun ownership and everything else that you do, yeah, it's a great way to spend some time and a, and a great way to kick back. Uh Sean, I want to thank you very much for being uh, my first guest on the Steve Austin Show. Uh, you're a legend in, a, in the business of professional wrestling. You've always been uh, a very interesting cat to me. I've watched you from afar, admired your work. Uh, God, just when you had your attitude back in the day, you know, I, I didn't think too much of you. You know, I was pissed off at you like a lot of guys were, but you were leading the charge, and I got a chance to get in the ring with you on a special night on WrestleMania 14, and uh, you and I never traveled the roads together. You know, we'll, we'll talk together again maybe. We can talk about the days of the click. But uh, just when you took up hunting and, and you and I, y'all you, you came out with the MRA gang to the Broken Skull Ranch. It was a wonderful spending time for uh, with you. Uh, just I'm glad that uh, we are as friendly as we are now. And I wish uh, safe travels, happy hunting, and all the best to you and your family. 
Well, I, I appreciate it, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll let you wrap it up. But uh, that uh, that hunt, you know, meant the world to me. I mean, because it, 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 you know, you know, I always wanted to know you on a different level. I mean, and, and I'm, you know, and. It's just too hard to do it while you're doing that job, and and, and it is. You know, it's a competitive atmosphere. Yeah. It, it, it is, you know. What I mean, and especially back then. I mean, I was, you know, and again, that's why it's like, you know, it's like one of those things where you say, you know, give me, give me another chance, dude. You know, because we got a lot in common. I've always, I've always dug you and thought the world of you, and, and uh, you know, so you're, you're welcome, you know, with us, you know, at any time, and. And again, I hope the show does well. Anytime you need me, I will uh, be there. I'm a phone call away, man. So whatever you need, you just let me know. I will uh, give you a call in a couple of weeks. I'm going to go down to film Redneck Island. I'm coming hunting with you and the MRA gang. Thank you very much, Sean. You bet, man. Take care. Steve. Take care, man. Bye-bye. All right, man. Holy shit, that was uh, just one badass heart-to-heart conversation with a, uh, a badass cat. This is Steve Austin. Thank you for tuning in to Steve Austin's show. i got some badass shit coming up for you. Stay tuned. We'll catch you down the road. I'm out. Hey, man, do you own or rent your home? Sure you do. And I bet it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to GEICO.com. Get a quote and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. Support for this podcast comes from Pluto TV. Need an escape? Drop into Pluto TV for a world of free TV. Stream hundreds of channels and thousands of movies and shows all for free. Yeah, free. No subscriptions, no fees. Imagine 24-7 channels of Narcos, CSI, Star Trek, Survivor, and everything else from hit movies to binge-worthy TV shows, the latest news, live sports, comedy, and more. What are you waiting for? Download the free Pluto TV app for Android, iPhone, Roku, and Fire TV and start streaming now. Pluto TV. Drop in. Watch free.